Hello and welcome to the ANU series of Drishti IS. Today we have a very shocking news, a news that you might think is going to affect us as the dwellers of the earth. The core of the earth, specifically the inner core of the earth, is spinning the opposite way. Now we are going to discuss that only. Is it going to have any impact on us? The different layers of the earth, specifically in detail, we are going to discuss the core and inner core and it might also surprise you to know that there is an inner inner core a core to the inner core so we are going to discuss all that from the perspective of gs mains paper one and from the perspective of your preliminary examination it is important that you understand everything now the news says earth's inner core may have started spinning the other way what does this mean as we know the core actually is divided into two parts the outer core and the inner core so we are specifically going to talk about inner core if we talk about the layers of the earth earth is divided into the terrestrial part of the earth is divided into crust mantle and core mantle is further divided into the upper mantle and mantle lower mantle then we have the outer core and the inner core if we talk about crust the crust is thick in the continent it is the older version in the continent and if we talk about the oceanic crust it is the denser and the younger part of it the crust actually makes up 41 percent of the earth's terrestrial surface other than that in the continental crust it is thick of approximately it has a thickness of approximately 20 to 80 kilometers all right then we have the mantle the mantle is 2900 kilometers thick and it actually is forming 94 percent 94 percent of the earth's terrestrial layer then we have the outer core and the inner core the outer core is the molten part and the inner core is the solid part for more detail about it we are going to proceed and talk in detail about the core then as we can see the different discontinuities the Mohoveracic discontinuity lies between the lower crust and the upper mantle. Repeti lies between the discontinuity, uh, is a discontinuity that lies between the upper and the lower mantle. And then we have the Gutenberg discontinuity between lower mantle and outer core. And finally, the Lehman discontinuity between the outer and the inner core. Lehman was the Danish scientist who found out about the core in 1936, and that is why it is named after her. Now, the core is a very hot and very dense center of our planet. It is found about 2900 kilometers below the Earth's surface where the mantle ends. It has a radius of about 3485 kilometers. And when the Earth was formed about 4.5 billion years ago, it was a uniform ball of hot rock. The core is the younger part of the Earth. Earlier, it was a uniform ball, but later on, due to the degas degasification and other phenomenon, it started differentiating and that is known as planet differentiation. Now radioactive decay and leftover heat that happened because of the planetary evolution, it caused the ball to get even hotter and after about 500 million years, our young planet's temperature heated to the melting point of iron which is about 1538 degrees Celsius and this is known as iron catastrophe. Okay, And as we know, the core is made up of nickel and iron and that is why it is known as night and then what happens that greater more rapid movement of earth's molten rocky material start to take place the relatively buoyant material which is the thinner one uh, we can say the buoyant or the more uh, you can say lighter ones they stayed close to the planet's exterior and that comprised of oxygen and other important elements and that formed the earth's mantle and crust but there were droplets of iron, nickel and other heavy materials that started gravitating in the middle. And this differentiation of different elements layer wise is known as planetary differentiation. So this can be asked in your examination. Have a look at it. Why is the core so hot? It must also uh, be important for you to know this from the perspective of analytical portion. Earth's core is basically the furnace of the geothermal gradient and the geothermal gradient is about 25 degrees Celsius per kilometer of depth. So as we go below, go down below, there is an increase of 25 degrees Celsius per kilometer. And 
when there is also um, uh, when we talk about the heat that is trapped in the core of the earth there is also certain other factors such as the radioactive elements are decaying and that is why it is emanating heat there is also the leftover heat from the planetary evolution or planetary differentiation the heat which is released as the liquid outer core solidifies near its boundary with the inner core so as we know the outer core is the molten part or the melted part but the inner core this is the solid part so it's very it's a planet inside a planet this is the solid part the inner core is the solid part this is like a planet within a planet so the inner core is might be the size of the erstwhile planet pluto this is made almost entirely of metal specifically iron and nickel that is why it is known as knife elements that dissolve in iron which are known as siderophiles are also found in the core core so siderophiles they dissolve into iron and these are rare earth metals because they are not found easily okay and this includes gold platinum and cobalt sulfur on the other hand is also found in the core sulfur surprisingly makes up 90% of the core and it is found inside the core i mean the 90% of the sulfur that is present all over the earth is found inside the core and that is why it can be said that uh, the lighter elements such as sulfur did not make the core heavy as nickel and iron are there so iron is heavier in nature but because of the presence of sulfur in such an abundant amount along with elements such as oxygen silicon it is because of all this only that the uh, relatively lighter materials have made the core lighter in nature the fluctuating temperature in the core it depends on certain factors first what is the pressure or rotation pressure that is created by rotation of the earth the varying composition of the core elements different composition and at what place they are forming what kind of composition and uh, the range of temperature goes from 4400 degree celsius to about 6000 degree celsius so this could be asked in your prelims examination but if we talk about the core as a whole there is outer core and then there is inner core and this is a fact for prelims that between the outer and the inner core the discontinuity is known as bullet discontinuity very important preliminary fact remember it then if we talk about the outer core this is about 2200 km thick it is mainly comprised of liquid iron and nickel and the knife alloy of the outer core is very hot which ranges from 4500 degree celsius to 5500 degree celsius the liquid metal of the outer core has very low viscosity that means it can be easily deformed it is not very viscous in nature that means it can be easily into a deformity and it is also malleable what do you understand by malleable tell me in the comment segment because of the violent convection that is created by the collision of different metals by the you can say um, melting of different metals there is a violent collision uh, or convention convection in the outer core so because of this only this violent convection of different metals what happens the magnetic field of the earth is sustained the hottest part of the core is actually the bullen discontinuity and there here the temperature is 6000 degree celsius almost like the temperature of the sun moving ahead now if we talk about the inner core which are which is the core in question today it is a hot dense ball of mostly iron and it has a radius of about 1220 km temperature here is 5200 degree celsius and the temperature of inner core is far above the melting point of iron the inner core is not liquid or even molten it is solid in nature some geophysicists prefer to interpret the inner core not as a solid but as a plasma which behaves as a solid so you have to remember that it is solid in nature why is inner core solid in nature and not like the outer core it is liquid in nature because of the pressure that is being created by the atmosphere on earth it has held it like a ball a solid ball but geophysicists also say that it is a plasma which is the fourth state of matter which behaves like a solid but we do not have the proper equipments to know about it a lot so it is these are just theories in nature so the liquid outer core generally what generally factually separates the core inner core from the rest of the earth as we know that this is a solid one then we have different layers but this particular outer core is liquid in nature and it differentiates between the other layers and the inner core 
so it is kind of a separate planet only and the inner core basically because of this reason only as it is separated by the outer core is behaving different than the rest of the planet when it comes to the rotation it rotates eastward like the surface of the earth that is correct but it's a little faster it is rotating faster than the rest of the earth in eastward nature it because of this makes an extra rotation about every 1000 years and the ion crystals in the inner core they are arranged in the hcp that is hexagonal close packed pattern and because of this hexagonal close packed pattern they are aligned in north south uh, manner and this is along the earth's axis of rotation and magnetic field as you can see that uh, this is the axis of rotation okay of the earth and this is south magnetic pole of the earth then we have the north magnetic pole of the earth over here it is different if we compare it to the axis of actual rotation so here only in the north south manner only the core has its ion crystals aligned in the north south pattern okay and because of this what happens the rotation also differs and you see the orientation of the crystal structure means that the seismic waves the earthquake waves they travel fast when it goes from north to south than east to west that is why the waves of seismicity in the poles uh, as they are aligned in a north south manner the seismic waves will travel faster at the pole and less faster or comparing to the poles they will travel slower when it comes to the equator so because of this the core as the crystals ion crystals are aligned in such a manner like that of poles the seismic waves are traveling through them faster and not like the rest of the earth so this makes it easier for us to understand that because of this particular reason only there is an inner core which is solid in nature which has its ion crystals aligned in certain way seismic waves travel 4 seconds faster pole to pole than through the earth and as the entire earth slowly cools the inner core also glow, grows by about millimeter about a millimeter per year see the inner core grows up as bits of the liquid outer core solidify or crystallize another word for this is freezing although it's important to remember that ions freezing point is more than 1000 degrees celsius and the growth of the inner core is not uniform it is also different in nature even the inner core is divided into two different hemispheres the eastern hemisphere and the western hemisphere and because of this they don't melt evenly also they have a distinct crystalline structure which is the reason for their differentiation in rotation western hemisphere seems to be crystallizing more quickly than the eastern hemisphere and in fact the eastern hemisphere of the inner core may actually be melting so until and unless we find more theories to support it these are just theories in nature now geoscientists recently have discovered that the inner core also has an inner core a radical geological change took place about 500 million years ago that an inner inner core has developed but we do not know much more about it much about it to de go in detail about it now how did we get hold of the core earth was basically discovered to have a, have a solid inner core uh, from its molten outer core in only in the year 1936 by the danish seismologist in lemen okay she discovered it while she was studying seismograms or earthquakes earthquake waves in new zealand all right moving ahead now we talk about history of such incidents where the core started inner core started rotating differently see the inner core rotates relatively to the earth surface back and forth just like a swing like this okay one cycle of the swing is about seven decades again i'm saying these are just theories in nature until and unless proven it means that it changes direction roughly every 35 years it previously changed direction in the early 1970s and it was predicted that in mid 2040s it is going to change again but the inner core's rotation came to near halt in 2009 and then it started going in a different direction now the inner core is only significantly moved between 2001 to 2013 and after that it stayed put in its own place the inner core cycle is every 20 to 30 years rather than 70 years this has been proposed in the latest study and this has created differentiation or division between seismologists and geophysicists all right the impacts are not much for us the dwellers of the earth 
but the researchers said that this ro rotation roughly lines up with the change in what is called the length of day because small variation in the exact time it takes on earth to rotate on its axis this is just you know this is just a coincidence can be called as a coincidence now so far there is little to indicate what impacts it is going to have on us but let's see we do not have the proper equipment to actually gauge any sort of change change is there because there is a physical connection between different layers of the earth right but not something significant is going to happen all right so i hope you understood it due to paucity of time i'm going to take the names of those students who have answered my last question tomorrow i'm also going to attach one question for today so that you can answer it that's it thank you so much for watching